over the last few weeks, my channel has been pretty SUV heavy. In fact, ever since I started this channel, it's been pretty SUV heavy. But that's because I entered the industry when the industry become obsessed with higher riding cars, compact SUVs, crossovers, and also four by fours. We forget just how good the humble hatchback can be. And over the next few weeks, I'm really excited because I'm gonna be reviewing some fantastic hatchbacks existing onto the market and some facelifted versions, which I'm really excited to show you. Today, we're kicking things off with the unconventional Mazda 3. Unconventional in design and unconventional as to what is under the bonnet. I'm really excited to tell you about this car. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then hit that subscribe button and follow along to Auto Social UK. So let's start by talking about that unconventional design. All Mazda 3 hatches have a sleek and aerodynamic design. The swooping bonnet overhangs the front lights, giving the 3 a mean face. Even the entry-level SEL car starting at £22,500 looks smart and premium. Adding the GT trim takes what is already quite an aggressive and sleek looking car and adorns it in some gloss black just to highlight its features. You've got the gloss black which runs all the way under the lights and around the grille. You've also got a set of 18 inch gloss black alloy wheels. Now these will slightly affect the ride which I'll talk about later but they do look fantastic. You've also got that gloss black which frames the windows. Now this colour is probably going to be a bit of a hate it or love it and I actually fall into the love it camp. Is it silver? Is it gold? It's somewhere in between and I really like that about it. Around the back, following on the theme of the unconventional, Mazda hasn't chosen to hide its tailpipes underneath the car and put some fake ones in the rear diffuser. The Mazda 3 has a set of twin physical tailpipes. Now they are twin because this is the higher powered GT spec version, but they look great, don't they? It's also very classic Mazda. You've got those round, almost cartoon style lights that mirror the front lights. And when you open the boot, those rear lights are split. There's 351 litres of boot space in the back of the three, a little less than you'll find in the Volkswagen Golf or the Ford Focus. The space itself is well shaped, however, despite a usefully wide opening, there's a high lip to lift items over, with a drop on the other side to a low boot floor. Rear interior space is not ideal. I've not got the most legroom. It might look okay, but I've actually moved that front seat forward from my driving position. I'm around 5'4", and if I sit up straight, my head is almost touching the ceiling. These doors also come up quite high and the windows are quite narrow. Even with a sunroof, it's dark back here because the sunroof only covers the front two passengers. It is comfortable though, the middle seat is actually quite wide and you've got a nice wide armrest with two cup holders. Quality in this cabin is nothing short of outstanding. Go to any of the German competitors like Mercedes, Audi, BMW and you'll struggle to find an interior that is this well made. Everything you touch feels really soft. You've got this fantastic two-step dashboard with a leather wrapped and this bronze brown detailing of the stitching. It really does feel good quality. You've also got this fantastic chrome which runs along the middle of the car, which again, it doesn't look or feel like painted plastic. It feels like a really good quality chrome and you just know it's gonna wear a lot better. Down the centre console, you do have some gloss black, but if you look very carefully, it's almost like a glass covering a more textured detailing which sparkles in the sun. It's so pretty, but it does scratch and it does attract dust just like some gloss black would. So it's not gonna be my favorite, but for a while it does look very pretty. You'd be hard pressed to find some bad quality plastics. Even when you get down low, it doesn't feel bad quality. It feels still very good quality. You've got a fantastic, nice wide leather wrapped armrest, which you could comfortably fit two people's arms on. And it's got a decent amount of storage in here as well. And you've got your connectivity inside there. 
The GT trim does come with leather seats which are heated and these are so comfortable and such good quality. I've also got electrically adjustable driver seat. The passenger seat unfortunately isn't electrically adjusted so that's a bit of a shame but whether you go for the electric seats or the standard seats most people should be able to find a comfortable driving position. There is loads of adjustments for both the seats and the steering wheel. And let's talk about this steering wheel for a second. Finished in the softest leather with the stitching around the center. Again, you've got those fantastic chrome heavy weighted buttons which feel fantastic to touch. And again, unconventionally, for a sportier model, the Mazda 3 doesn't have a flat bottom steering wheel. It has this classically round steering wheel, which I kind of love. There's only one downside to the interior of the Mazda cabin. Some people might not even see this as a negative, but it's the lack of touchscreen infotainment system. The Mazda 3 infotainment system is all controlled using the central scroller. Now this is going to be great for some people and it's certainly less distracting on the road. You also get a satellite navigation as standard, which I think does show the slightly older generation of target audience the Mazda 3 has. The only problem is, is when using it with something like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it can be slightly fiddly. You have to scroll through a ton of settings until you get to where you actually want to go. And unlike some of Mazda's other products, it's not even a touchscreen when you're at standstill. Some people will find this frustrating, but to be honest, once you get used to it, like most things, it's not too bad. The entry-level SEL car might have a slightly higher starting point at £22,500 compared to the Kia Seed or Skoda Scala, but standard equipment is high, including radar cruise control, automatic headlights with high beam assist, rear parking sensors and safety features like blind spot monitoring and traffic sign recognition. Mazda's engines are anything out of the ordinary. As I mentioned, they don't have a turbo, but they're a little bit more techy than that. So the entry level is called the E Sky Active G, and it uses cylinder deactivation technology and a clever 24 volt mild hybrid system that's claimed to improve fuel economy and enhance performance a little. Now then you step up to this car and things become even more interesting. So this is Mazda's innovative e -Sky Active X, which is a compression ignition petrol engine. So basically, to get a little bit nerdy, what that does is it's a petrol engine that burns fuel more like a diesel. For the technology minded, that means that mixing spark ignition with compression ignition. And this is a difficult thing to do with a petrol engine. The fuel burn is between two and three times leaner than a standard petrol engine. And the unit can switch between spark ignition and compression ignition on the fly. Mazda claims that this system offers up to 20% better fuel economy and lower CO2 emissions. And according to Mazda, that means that you can enjoy MX-5 performance, but with Mazda 2 fuel economy. Around town, the Mazda 3 steering is precise. Its consistent pedals and the snappy manual gear shift mean that it takes all of the stress out of urban driving. However, it is set up to be a pretty stiff car, and this GT version rolling on 18-inch alloy wheels is a little rough out on the road. You do feel a lot of the bumps. It's not quite as soft as some of the Volkswagen Group cars. However, it is engaging and that's what Mazda is going for. Yes, okay, once you take it down the country lanes, it's never gonna be quite as engaging as the Ford Focus, which really does rule this class. However, it's still very good. At the beginning of the week, I was a little bit underwhelmed with the Mazda's three drive. I found the gear stick to be a little short in its throws, which meant I occasionally put it into the wrong gear. And I also found that with the lack of the turbo, it did struggle to have any oomph. But you know what? The longer I spend with this car, the more I get used to it. I've gotten used to the gearbox now and it's fantastic. You can really quickly work your way through the gearbox because of those short throws. And once you get used to how to work the non-turboed engine, it performs fantastically. And just the quality in this car is so apparent. 
everywhere you look you're surrounded by soft fill leathers and it does feel nice and comfortable and also serene it's a really nice place to be would i still opt for an automatic gearbox i probably would despite how good this manual box is but that's just a personal preference because i am a little bit lazy and don't like to change gear but i've actually been really surprised with this car and the longer i spend with it the less i want to give it back on paper mazda claim that the entry level e sky active g engine will produce mid to high 40s i think this is a little bit of a stretch and i think you're more likely to see high 30s mid 40s now i'm actually in the most efficient engine which is the e sky active x and it's supposed to do 50 miles per gallon plus i haven't quite been seeing this i've been seeing low to mid 40s but that's still really impressive out of a two liter 183 brake horsepower engine and also what is so nice is this car come with a full tank now i've done quite a few trips to and from work and normally by now in my R bath i'd be down to at least half a tank i've still got 360 miles and the needle has barely moved off of full this is a car that i could get on board with the mazda 3 isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea do you like that rhyme but there's some reason behind that rhyme because the Mazda 3 isn't going to appeal to everyone. The unconventional no touchscreen and non turboed engine might put some people off, but to other people it might be a positive. But let me know, would you pick the Mazda 3 or is there another hatchback that you'd choose on the market? And is there another hatchback you'd like me to review? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have enjoyed this video today, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me on Auto Social UK, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, see you later.